Then I tripped over the power cord and spilled my smoothie all over his suit and laptop. I'm definitely fired. I feel so powerless, you know? Just like one bad thing after the other. All right, bye. Everything sucks. Hey, who the hell are you? I'm a better version of you from a parallel universe, and I'm here to teach you that you're special and unique through the power of quantum physics. Look, I know this is overwhelming, but I'm here to explain that you're actually doing really well in the grand scheme of the multiverse. First, imagine the behavior of an atom. You mean like Adam Stevens from church camp? More like an atom, a key building block of our planet. This ping pong ball exists according to classical mechanics. It is right here in my hand. It can only be in one place at one time, right? Sure. But subatomic particles, like photons and electrons, exist in a realm of possibility before they are observed. This existence across every state at the same time is called a superposition. That sounds like a sex move. Also, this isn't making me feel better. Right. Hmm. So let's say we put your cat into a box. Okay. But I also drop in a device that could randomly release poison and kill the cat. Why would you do that? This is the thought experiment designed by Erwin Schrodinger in 1935. His reasoning was this. The cat inside the box was not alive or dead, but alive and dead because both outcomes were possible, but neither was known. Two things true at the same time? Just like the superposition? Right, exactly like that. Good listening. But by opening the box, we find that your cat is alive, the superposition collapses, and it is now a single outcome. What happens to the other possibilities? Do they just disappear? That's one explanation of it. The idea that the superposition collapses when observed is called the Copenhagen interpretation. Huh. I always wanted to study abroad in Copenhagen. I did my junior year there, changed my life. What did you end up doing instead? I got kicked out of marching band for body slamming the mascot. Speaking of slams, in 1957, Hugh Everett called the Copenhagen interpretation a philosophic monstrosity. He thought things like quantum particles and Schrodinger's cat continued to exist in ever-changing superpositions without ever collapsing to a single reality. This way, whenever someone makes a decision or observes a quantum particle, the universe splits, like an amoeba. So, there's a version of me that didn't spill smoothie on my boss? Hugh ever would say there are lots of different jennies. Spiders, spiders, spiders. 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 Oh, that's spiders. the one where giant spiders, spiders. run the planet. No! There are infinite possibilities according to the many worlds theory. Everything you could have done or not done exists in a universe for itself. Kind of like a giant tree with many branches. Whoa, that's pretty awesome. What was the decision that created the spider planet? You don't want to know. So I'm just one of an infinite amount of Jennies? Well, yes, but you're the only Jenny that decided to order a different smoothie than usual and spilled it on your boss because the lid didn't fit right. Every day, you get to make decisions that separate you from the infinite amounts of yous that could be or might be in the multiverse. You get to decide. Pretty interesting, right? Yeah, it actually is. So how can I drop... Greetings, my dears, in love and light. The Mandela Effect is it really a thing? I think it is. And what's causing it? Now, I had never heard of the Mandela Effect until it was about three years ago when my ex-partner, he looked at a map and he said, wait a minute, why is New Zealand there? It's not supposed to be there. New Zealand's moved on the map. It's supposed to be to the west of Australia and up a bit. But now, it's on the east of Australia, and down a bit. How can that be so? So, in a confused state and disbelieving, he looks at lots of different maps. So, I was finding this all a bit strange, and he went online to the Above Top Secret website and found a thread where others 
a few years ago were discussing the fact that they thought that New Zealand had moved. Just quickly, here's what someone said on that website a few years ago. There are people like me that have always remembered and still think vividly that New Zealand is located on the left side to the northwest of Australia. Then there is Australia which should be in the middle of nowhere, just a lot of blue water all around it and far away from other land masses except for New Zealand on its left side. And someone else said, um, what the? I just looked at the thread, then started searching for Australian maps. They're all wrong. This is beyond scary. So there's a number of people that are pretty certain about this. Now here's some more examples of the Mandela Effect in action. People remembering that there's actually 52 states in the United States of America instead of 50. How Ronald Reagan died. Patrick Swayze making a full recovery. As I mentioned, the Bernstein Bears instead of the Bernstein Bears. Muhammad Ali passing away several years before he actually did, in this timeline anyway. and. In Star Wars, Luke, I am your father, having now changed to, no, I am your father. Now, what is responsible for this phenomenon? Now, a lot of people are blaming CERN. That is the biggest machine in the world, deep underground, studying the fundamental particles of matter. CERN has been going for years, but people seem to have been reporting the Mandela effects since their Large Hadron Collider, LHC, started up and started actual experiments around 2010. But actually, you see, people were reporting the Mandela effects before CERN's Large Hadron Collider was even switched on, although it was performing other experiments. This is from Reality Shifters blog. The earliest examples of the Mandela effect, and this is by Cynthia Sue Larson. In a small sample size survey conducted in 2005, I reported that nine celebrities at the time were noted for having been reported dead by reputable sources, only to subsequently be reported very much alive again. Back in July 2005, the celebrity heading up the Alive Again list was Bob Keeshan, an American actor who played a TV character known as Captain Kangaroo. A whopping 26% of those surveyed at the time recalled that Bob Keeshan had died before 2004 and then died again in January 2004. Remember, this is before CERN switched on its Large Hadron Collider. So in this survey, performed by Cynthia Sue Larson, there are people reporting people being alive again after vividly remembering them having died in the past. Yes, some of these could have been mistakes, but even if one of them is true, what does that mean? So, even more reasons why this might be happening. So as well as CERN being a possibility, it may also be due to Earth's vibrational shift. Please see my previous videos on this subject for background information. So as we go through this vibrational shift, we too are shifting in vibration. We're becoming something else. We're moving to a new layer of existence. Our DNA is changing. We're changing. We are raising in vibration physically, even though physically we are energetic. The vibration of matter within our bodies and within the world is raising. So as I explained in those previous videos, the fourth density of existence that we're moving to, we're in the third density at the moment, the fourth density has five dimensions and that's why you can move around in time. We know what this reality is like. It has four dimensions. It has depth, width, height and time moving in along in line. Now, in the next stage of existence, time can be moved around within at will. So, this may be a reason why we're experiencing the merging of timelines. And these little things are being noticed. It's going to be little things at first. It's going to be things that some people, groups of people remember, as I have already said. And this is just the kinds of things that would be apparent, but then you think, oh, silly, it's TV shows, it's the names of books and things. But it's going to be little things that are publicly known, things that would have been little decisions. 
when it comes to Nelson Mandela passing away, there could have been a decision involved there. It could have been a decision made by somebody in prison. We don't know how he died, apparently, in the other timeline in the 80s. It could have been the decision of someone else, perhaps, you know, foul play or something. So there would have been a decision involved. But in this timeline, that decision was made the other way to well that resulted in him staying alive in this in this reality so as our vibration is rising many people are experiencing abilities that are in accordance with the next layer of existence many people are their consciousness is able to shift it's not limited by time anymore so many people who are experiencing the mandela effect one possible reason is that their consciousness, their own consciousness is able to shift between timelines or it's made a jump. Now, as in the Seth material, it explains how our physical body and our personality here is a projection into this reality. And there's many of us existing simultaneously and many versions of us existing simultaneously, which will merge at the end of our lifetime into the higher self and it becomes overall higher self experience. Now those different versions of you, your consciousness could be jumping between or you could be experiencing a different one, a different timeline and the changes will be subtle because there will be adjacent timelines, the closest ones to you where there's only tiny changes. You may be shifting all the time and not remembering but there may be occurrences where you do remember or you could not be shifting all the time and just shift occasionally and then you'll remember little tiny differences. So you're not physically jumping between timelines, it's just your consciousness that could be doing it. Or the timelines could be merging, as I said, sort of tangling together or, or splitting apart and some of our consciousness going one, down one road and others going down another road. So we're exhibiting abilities that are going to be prevalent within the next stage of existence as many of us start to make that transition. Okay, another possible reason for this Mandela Effect phenomenon is knowledge of other timelines. So actually, as again, our vibrational frequency rises, our knowledge, the ability to access the Akashic Records, the great mass bank of everything that ever has, is or will occur, and that's on every timeline too, that we're able to access this knowledge and it somehow becomes our overriding memory. I think perhaps this is a less possibility of this being the reason behind it, but it may be our consciousnesses being able to access knowledge of other timelines, of other dimensions, of other existences where we are existing. Okay, here's another possible reason for the Mandela effect, and this one is slightly more sinister perhaps, or it may be for a good reasons, that someone is changing the timeline, that someone from our future is changing the past and our consciousnesses are not quite buying it. We are projected into this reality by our higher selves. This reality exists independent of our consciousnesses and yet we are still immersed within it and integral within it. It goes on whether we're in it or not, that's what I mean. But you, may, you may not know about all the changes. So. There's been a change in the timeline. Now, why would someone from the future want to change a timeline? Maybe because they're trying to improve conditions in the future. Maybe because they're trying to change it for their own ends in the future. Maybe it's to protect us in the future. There could be lots of reasons for it. So now I'm not saying that someone would bother to travel back in time to change the name of a movie or book. Instead, I'm saying that other changes have occurred as a side effect someone purposefully changes the timeline and other probable unrelated circumstances happen to occur instead of their alternatives simply because there was the possibility if there was a change in the timeline we wouldn't even know about it it would just have a knock-on effect but some consciousnesses are just not buying the changes okay so my final reason the mandela effect could be happening that i can think of right now is a little bit more far out but stay with me on this because we know about synchronicities now if you if you see synchronicities happening in your life and you start to pay attention to them and know that they are sort of a heads up for you to pay attention to learn and experience something synchronicities i mean not just by seeing 11 11 on a clock or other co coincidental uh, arrangements combinations of numbers 
Here's a quick example. In one day, I kept running into people that needed my assistance. So I was on the train for the day and a girl lost her purse and I helped her sort out a situation. Another lady needed help in carrying with her bag. Uh, a child dropped something and I helped them. Someone needed help with their baggage. So just people just kept needing help all the time and I helped them. So this is a quite a synchronistic day. I needed to obviously learn and experience what it was like to help some people that day physically and the universe kept throwing it my way that day and any other time I'm on the same train journey nothing ever happens. So that's an example of synchronicities. I had to learn something about that experience that day. Now with the Mandela effect, it may be true that in the same way, I'm not saying it's synchronistic, but in the same way that the universe seems to change things in order to give you experience, like it seems like the universe is on purpose changing things, making things occur and coming to your experience for your experience. It just seems too coincidental that it's not chance, it's by design, the universe creation is giving you things, not by chance. So the Mandela effect may be something in that vein where it is literally changing something and we are just conscious, conscious of the change. Again, our consciousnesses are not buying the change, some of them are convinced by it, consciousness has been overwritten, the memory's overwritten, other people, it hasn't worked, hasn't been overwritten. So it could be creation changing something for the nature of experience. So in the end, don't worry about the Mandela effect. It is something that seems to be happening to many of us. But as I said, I don't feel intuitively that it's something that we should worry about. We can't stop it after all. All we can do is sort of speculate and chat about it, try and give each other comfort or make lists and write down any times you see it's happening. Go online, chat to others about it. The more people that are aware of it, the better. And then these ideas can come to the forefront, become more and more mainstream as humanity awakens. It's one of those interesting, important phenomenon that's useful for people who are having an awakening. What do you think? Leave me a comment and let me know what you think about it. Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me. The probability of you not having watched this video already is a one in a billion chance. You have watched this video many times before, even though it may seem new to you. Once the experience of what you are experiencing right now has been experienced, the information of what you are experiencing has been recorded to the construct of your reality and would therefore stay as a present memory. The memories and any new experiences you make that seem to be new and feel new can be verified when searching for proof of existence according to what your construct of reality has recorded. When looking at the past or thinking of the past, you are only experiencing a memory that can only exist right now. Any small variable change where your memories do not match the construct of the reality you are in is proof alone that you are experiencing the projection and everything is a holographic experience. You have shifted realities when your memories cannot be verified except only when you verify them through another conscious awareness you interact with. Keep in mind that reality shifts or any experiences you will make are the best mathematical outcomes for you chosen by the creator to allow your free will to continue and learn from your experiences. Anything that has existed or anything that can exist has always existed. The thought of you was created like a drop of water in the ocean. You are what you think and you are a co-creator. There has always been a lot of information holding you together. Thanks again everyone for joining me. So here I created an illustrative drawing on my opinion of how the Mandela effect and the matrix are uh, completely related. So here we go with uh, you. This is you. This is where your memory bank and your experiences are, which makes you you and your experience right now and your experiences, which is your memories. You have never moved from here. You have always been in the same position uh, since the beginning of birth and even though you walk in the street or you move around it may seem and feel like you're moving but you have actually have always been in the same place uh, just like how the world map changes are proving that the world map can change but you haven't changed except maybe your body parts and everything else has changed but uh, your conscious awareness hasn't changed you're still aware of yourself so you are here you're you will be here from the beginning to the end 
Uh, all, all your senses are in here. Your five and whatever other senses there are, are here. You have always existed here. And so, um, this is, uh, these black lines, you can see here that uh, this is reality shifting during sleep. You're shifting during these black lines. It could also be rapid eye movement, REM, or paradoxical sleep. It could also, you could also be shifting during a deja vu while you're awake. When you experience a deja vu, you could be shifting. It's a possibility. Uh, but my biggest belief has been uh, we shift during sleep. Um, because if we were to notice uh, these shifts while we were consciously awake, uh, I think a lot of people would be going crazy and they wouldn't be able to handle the shifts. So when you wake up, you wake up in a new reality. When you, sh when you sleep, you're shifting. And when you wake up, you wake up in a new reality that is very, very similar with small changes. Uh, those are the Mandela effects or considered glitches or Easter eggs. You got to go hunting for them. But uh, uh, yeah, so here we go. We go in. Uh, these are, you know, these are different use. Uh, when you wake up, you wake up in a new reality that is very, very similar. And so uh, keep in mind that anything that can has existed or can exist has always existed. So keep that in mind as we follow this uh, diagram. So here, uh, you know, you shifted into this reality where um, where you are, you started in a reality where you remember learning that uh, for this is one big Mandela effect for a lot of people, uh, including me. I remember Hillary Clinton's first name was spelled with only one L. It was Hillary with one L. And so uh, this is uh, these lines right here. Uh, that's the projection. Now, uh, when you know when you interact with a person, it's kind of like multiplayer interaction. And this is the projection where you guys. Or, uh, you know, you're experiencing the, pro the projection of Hillary Clinton or experiencing the projection of anyone, a loved one, a family member, a friend. You're experiencing the projection and uh, all, the, all the senses are here. This is all you and, uh, you know, you're receiving information. Every, every conscious awareness is receiving information, which is experiencing the projection. And um, so these other cir these circles right here are other conscious awareness. So these are other people. Right now, um, now you shift into a new reality with these other people, right? So uh, the only way uh, you, you guys are shifting and the only way to verify a uh, Mandela effect is if uh, they're experiencing the same projection as you, where now Hillary and this reality and this supposed reality is now spelled with two L's, right? So it's always been two L's in this reality. So you go around and you ask other conscious awareness if they have the same memory of it being with one L. Now that's the only way we can verify a uh, proof of glitch or reality shifting, All right? So um, just like another example, a uh, popular example is the Sinbad Genie movie, right? Uh, you know, you we experienced it, we experienced some of us did that there was a Sinbad Genie movie, and now you shifted into a reality where you're experiencing a projection where Sinbad is not a genie, and you continue to shift because. Um, that's just how the matrix works and it's this is what the Mandela effects are proving and so uh, you know uh, these all these use are uh, similar realities and parallel universes if you want to call it but it's basically just a uh, matrix as you guys can see over there but yeah um, this is my diagram you're constantly shifting this is you know you've always been here no matter how it looks different here you've actually have always been in the same place uh, your conscious awareness has always been in the same place uh, nothing moves. Uh, time and space is an illusion, as you guys can see there. Uh, so, yeah, so um, you're constantly shifting, and this is my diagram. Uh, I'm going to explain uh, rapid eye movement and REM, or paradoxical sleep. Um, when, you, when you go to sleep, there's this thing called REM, which stands for rapid eye movement, or it's also known as paradoxical sleep. Now, uh, there's videos out there, which I'll play uh, this one right here. Now, as you guys see, that was a time lapse of a uh, person on YouTube who created a time lapse of him sleeping, and we all uh, we all experience uh, rapid eye movement uh, during our final stages of sleep, supposedly according to science. 
And so we can see here that, the, uh, that in that video that the kid's eyes were uh, moving extremely fast and we all experience, we all go through that. Uh, if we all, if we um, look at a, a person while they're sleeping, you will see rapid eye movement at times. And so um, that is just like uh, downloading information on uh, the Matrix, the movie. Uh, where uh, you know Neo is shown downloading information uh, so he can learn Kung Fu and martial arts to fight Morpheus as you guys can see in this next video now, I'm supposed to start with these operation programs first that's major butter and shed let's do something a little more fun how about combat training I'm going to learn jiu-jitsu. <gasps> Holy shit. Hey, Mikey, I think he likes it. How about some more? Hell oh, yes. Show me. See, you see Neil's eyes are moving quickly. You're downloading information. Uh, when, you're, when you're sleeping, you're shifting, you're downloading new information to the new reality you are going to wake up to, uh, which is a very similar reality to the last one you just left. And it's kind of like uh, shifting into new dimensions. And so, um, you know, dimensions, realities, parallel universes, they're all the same thing. It's all a matrix. It's all part of the mind. And um, so that wraps it up, guys. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, if you like this video, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Uh, show your family, friends, and coworkers to see what they think. Uh, this is honestly my belief on how the Mandela effect and reality shift and all them and the Matrix are all are all uh, related to each other. And so this has been my belief for quite some time. I finally took some time to draw a diagram and show you a couple videos uh, proving that uh, there is a Matrix and this is a Matrix and. Um, you are living, experiencing a matrix, and uh, it's a, it's an awakening. So uh, I go, I got, I hope you guys enjoy this, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. John one one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Word is sound, so in the beginning was sound. Think of the universe. Verse is a song, and a song is sound. Uni means one. So wouldn't it be safe to say universe means one sound? This whole existence and universe is one big sound. Sound is a vibration. The universe is one big vibrating sound. This is a water droplet that you're going to see. And in this water droplet, a frequency uh, is being pumped into this water droplet. As the frequency uh, is mirrored in the droplet, you'll actually see the geometric patterns in that droplet. Now what's happening, and the reason that this is so significant, is because we're going to do a frequency sweep. We're going to go from low frequencies to higher frequencies. And what you'll find is this. You'll see that in the lower frequencies, the patterns are less complex. And in the higher frequency, the patterns are more complex. So we're going through a sweep from lower to higher frequency. I'm sharing this with you now because Earth is essentially going through a frequency sweep. Our fundamental pulse, our base pulse that has hovered around 7.8 cycles per second now is changing. And again, there's a lot of controversy about what the change is, and we're witnessing the change. As we go through our planetary shift of this pulse, patterns of energy must change to respond to that, just as patterns of energy in this water are changing to respond to this, to this pulse. And we'll begin with simply the concentric patterns in the water 
as the frequency begins, every once in a while will reach a key threshold resonance, such as that moment right there. And in that key threshold resonance, the entire pattern morphed into a more complex expression of itself, simply because the frequency changed. Now watch what happens. The frequency is still increasing. And watch what happens. As we reach a, another key threshold resonance, this entire pattern will morph into a beautifully uh, and more complex pattern of itself. Again, and again. And look at this pattern right here. Look what you're seeing right here. Look at the beautiful geometry. Here is a perfect cube. There's a perfect tetrahedron, a star tetrahedron. In two dimensions, we've got the octahedron. Very powerful images of sacred geometry held in place simply because we've achieved the vibratory pattern that allows that in this water droplet. And as the vibration increases, these patterns will become more and more complex. You can see the pulse from where you are. Can you see the pulse actually in, uh, in the water? As we go into this, the last set of the frequencies, what you'll see is that the entire, and you'll watch along the outer perimeter, the entire pattern reaches its greatest level of complexity, and then it goes back. Uh, as the frequencies drop, it goes back to what it was, the concentric circles, as it was originally. It almost looks alive. You know, you've been offered many times the concept that thought is vibration. Have you ever considered that emotion is vibration? Feeling is vibration. We are always feeling something. We are always emoting something. We may not always be aware of what that is. We carry those patterns with us. As we hold a feeling and an emotion, what we're doing is we are holding a vibratory pattern in the liquid crystal of our bodies. And what you're going to see now are what happens to particles of sand and other various particles when a sound resonates across a plate and, and resonates those particles in tune with the sound. Because when we think, we're not just sending out a wave which resonates the energy, we're sending out on a frequency outside of the range of human hearing, we're sending out a sound. Everything is sound. When we think a sound goes out, it resonates the energy around us to that sound. And what you're about to see are some pictures that show this happening when sound is introduced and how sound takes random particles and turns it into astonishing form. And that's how this universe was created. In the beginning was the word, and the word was sound. So what you're looking at here is merely particles formed into patterns by sound. Uh, they were all over the place to start with, just in random positions on the plate. As soon as the sound appears, they form into these patterns because um, everything is sound. And it is sound that turns uh, matter and energy into form. Patterns on wings of uh, birds and insects are all the manifestation of the sound vibrations. Every organ in our body uh, resonates to a certain frequency. And when our thoughts um, and emotions and stress uh, and the vibrations that that causes de-harmonize the vibrational state of our various parts of our body, we become ill. We think ourselves into illness because we're affecting the vibrational state of the body. And so every time you think and feel, you're resonating a frequency which is making the energy around you resonate to the same frequency. What you give out is what you create. We've seen the galaxies and now here are the planets forming just on a plate from particles caused by sound passing through them. Uh, this planet has a resonant frequency. It's called the Schumann cavity resonance. But basically, while that frequency holds, the planet will hold its present form. If the frequency changes, the form will change. It's the same with everything. And here you see sound being passed through 
iron filings and particles and therefore creating form once again. And from these pictures, it's hardly difficult to uh, see how the human body is formed through sound resonating energy and how that physical form is held as long as that sound mattress is held. But once that changes, the physical body changes. All of these being expressions of sequences and ratios in nature. And when sound, when vibration, is expressed along those lines, along those ratios, in those forms. It will be the most amplifying, the most magnifying for you in your reality. Because that is the fundamental template, those ratios, those frequencies upon which your physical reality construct is based. Does that make some sense? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Is this helping? Uh, yes, I, I just wanted you to speak more about sound because uh, I've been told it's like bringing heaven into the earth plane. Well, it can be, yes, By if you use it that way. That's what we are actually talking about, is the idea that when you understand that are certain ratios, harmonies, frequencies that are representative of the underlying construct of physical reality, you will understand that they are actually representative of the underlying construct of all realities. And when you hit those chords, like a vortex, you are hitting the entire spectrum. And thus you are creating a doorway to open, a gateway to open, in which unlimited possibilities can occur. So when you use sound as one of those techniques, one of those permission slips, to allow individuals to be attracted to those harmonies and align themselves to those harmonies, those vibrations, those resonances that are created in that way, then you allow them to unlock, <clears throat> open up to more possibility, to downloads, to information, to flow of energy, and to crystallization in your reality in a new way. So that bringing those higher energies, as you say, down to Earth, can crystallize them in a pattern that is more representative of those higher frequencies. Thus, as you say, colloquially, bringing heaven on Earth. So pH is the acidity of the body, and as you mentioned, all of the chronic diseases require your body chemistry to go acid. And alkalinization means that you have more of the OH, the hydrogen and oxygen combination that carries the energy. So if you want to have optimal energy, you want to do some deep breathing, and you want to be able to have good hydration that facilitates alkalinization of the body chemistry. And the diseases just disappear. And so this is really fundamental to natural healing. There's five steps in what I recommend is the Healing Celebrations book. Healing Celebrations subtitled Miraculous Recoveries through Ancient Scripture, Natural Medicine, and Modern Science. The first two steps, number one is detoxification. The second is alkalinization. And, and the third is boosting or normalizing natural immunity holistically. Mm -hmm. And the fourth step is oxygenation. And the fifth step is bioenergizing virtually through prayer, through sound, through color, through frequency, through resonance, through music. This creates an energy of spirituality that's impregnable against, makes your body completely impregnable against infectious diseases, all diseases. Again, there's so many miracles uh, that we have witnessed in our family and friends of miraculous healings and how and the restoration and the spiritual renaissance and the evolution of who we really are as superhuman beings involves now coming to terms with this truth. Uh, the protagonist in the story decided that he was going to try to jump dimensions. Now apparently this is a real thing, and there's an entire subreddit with over 12,000, 13,000 people who subscribe to it. People try this, and a lot of people claim that it works. Now, I don't know if it works or not, but I thought I would try it here and upload it on my channel for you guys to see. And if you're interested, maybe you could try it too. I'm going to start by reading you the instructions. Here are the instructions, which you should follow exactly. Choose a specific situation that you want to change, but one that you don't necessarily have much influence over. Decide clearly what the current situation is, and what the desired, and what the desired replacement situation is. Get two glasses. Get two bits of paper or labels. Fill one of the glasses with water. 
On the first label, write a word that summarizes the current situation and stick it to the filled glass. On the second label, write a word that summarizes the desired situation and stick it to the empty glass. With the two glasses in front of you, pause for a moment and contemplate how your life is currently filled with the first situation and the empty of the desired situation. Then, when you're ready, pour the water from the first glass, the current situation, into the second glass, the desired situation, while really noticing the sounds and feelings and shifting of the water from one to the other. Sit back and see the glasses in their new state. Allow yourself to take a deep breath and feel relieved. Drink the water and enjoy the satisfaction of having made the desired change. Take off the labels, put away the glasses, and carry on with your life. One thing I'd like to emphasize is that you will get results here. So if you decide to perform this exercise, please take this seriously and only choose a replacement situation that you will be happy to live with. Now I don't know if it's real or not guys, but I'm going to try it. And I thought about what I wanted to change, and although I have uh, dead relatives and dead friends, I don't want to jump that much, you know? I feel like changing something like that would really alter the world if it did come true. So for my two glasses method, I'm going to decide to write down, enjoy smoking, because that's what I do. I, I enjoy smoking or else I wouldn't do it. And on the other glass, I'm going to write, doesn't enjoy smoking. Seems pretty simple, right? It's a good way to, to see if this will work or not, or maybe just trick my mind into quitting smoking. Either way, I've got nothing to lose in this situation. So here we go. So. With the two glasses in front of you, pause for a moment and contemplate how your life is currently filled with the first situation. I'm feeding for a dart right now, so let me just think about this for a minute. All right. I guess I'm ready. Let's hope this works. I'm supposed to focus on the water shifting. <sighs> Bottoms up. off the labels and put away the glass. That's all there is to it. I'm going to know if in a couple minutes I want to have a dart or not or, you know, I don't know. I hope you find this informative and I hope you give it a try for yourself. Now don't do anything crazy. All right, I did something very simple that will help my life. Every moment that you have an experience, you're quite literally experiencing an alternate reality. In this world, or in this dimension, there are many different realities that can be manifested. And there exists a space that contains every single possible outcome that can be manifested. Every change is a complete change. Every change is a complete shift. Every motion, every movement is a completely different reality. Water is alive. Water is life. Dr. Emoto, who actually dedicated his whole life towards the work of researching and actually proving that water is alive. Water is life. The second room, he'll take a glass and then he'll, a lot of people around it will give a lot of love and say, I love you and throw all this vibration 
at the water. And then he'll take both of the water and he will freeze them both. Then what he found was that in the heat room, the water formed crystals that looked like chaos. And in the love room, the crystals that were formed were beautiful. And then from that moment, he proved that water actually had feelings and emotions, which was a whole bizarre experience in itself. When he put that out there, people were going crazy and then thinking it's actually this or it's actually that and justifying why this can't be true. And then he carried on his research to really prove that it is true. And that is the case. I want to talk about a brand new manifestation method that I just ran across. And it's called the two cup method. Some people also use it for quantum jumping, which is actually the exact same thing. Quantum jumping and manifestation is the exact same thing. It all works with energy, rhythm, frequency, and vibration. Pretty much the exact same thing. Quantum jumping is basically jumping from parallel reality to parallel reality using intention. Well, we're constantly going through realities every millisecond, every half a second. When you get time, study quantum physics and the many worlds theory. It is absolutely mind blowing. Quantum jumping and manifestation is really the exact same thing. Because we are always going through parallel reality, through parallel reality, based on our consciousness, our frequency, our vibration. I talked about this in another video, but think of reality like a radio station. 105.5 you are on 105.5 and in that reality in that station you are depressed you are you are borderline homeless you can't get a girlfriend or a boyfriend for anything you are completely devastated and miserable 80 percent of the time your job is unfulfilling but on 105.7 your life is going great. You have a wonderful job. You have a wonderful home that you live in. You have wonderful relationships. You work a fulfilling career, more than enough money. Life is going great for you. That's how reality works. You get the broadcast of the frequency you are emitting. You are always broadcasting a certain signal. What are you broadcasting? So with the two cup method, we are attempting to switch broadcasts through intention because we can do it. But not only through intention, but intention through water. Water holds memory and water has consciousness. And also it has been scientifically proven that emotions and intentions have a direct effect on water. So this experiment works because you are changing your reality through intention using water. paper and you write your dream in present sense so I wrote that I won money and I wrote things like I won lottery this money or this my husband and I are very happy we are enjoying ourselves we are extremely happy and uh, we don't need to actually work anymore and we can do anything we want to do so you write everything in a present sense have a glass of water and you put a glass of water here yeah and then what you do next is after you wrote your dream you start make your hands extremely hot yeah obviously i'm talking now but while you're doing this you're going to be by yourself so you take a fresh glass of water 
in the morning, you write on the piece of paper in a present sense exactly what you like to achieve. Then you put a glass of water on top of the paper. Then you take your palms and then you start rubbing them together. So you energize your hands. And then you take the hands while they're extremely hot and around the glass. And you just think about the dream or the wish that you wrote it and be quiet for a few minutes, for a few moments. It's kind of a meditation. So this water will be infused with your energy while you drink in it throughout the day or immediately. It goes through your body. So that's it. I do this for two weeks or so and you start seeing results. Let's do it together. If you guys want to do it with me, go grab two cups. You're going to choose a situation in your life that you want to change, but you don't really have that much influence over. And then you write on the other post-it note your desired state, what you want in this particular part of your life. So current versus desired. Okay, so you're going to label the first cup your current state, and then you're going to label the second cup your desired state. Um, so then you fill the two cups with water. So then we label the first cup the current situation, which I've already done, and then you label the second cup your desired situation, which I've already done. And then you visualize your life currently with the first cup. Okay, so I'm gonna visualize this situation. Okay, and then you're gonna empty the second cup, desired state. So I'm gonna go empty this in the sink. Okay, and then you're gonna pour the first cup, your current situation, into the desired cup, the second glass. And you focus on that shift. Really focus on visualizing pouring this cup in this situation and transferring and shifting it over to your desired state. So let me take a moment. Sit back and feel it. And then you drink that water and enjoy having made the desired outcome. So cheers. And that, my friends, is the two cup method. Hello. My name is Carrie. Today I would like to focus on the Mandela Effect. It has become increasingly obvious to many more people, that they are experiencing this now. Then suddenly everything changed around 2012-13. At the same time, Sting Like a Bee Muhammad Ali, died. When I heard this, 2012-13, I thought isn't he already dead years ago. I have two memories now, well three actually, of Muhammad Ali dying, as he has just died this year, in this timeline. But for me, it's the third time I've heard it. Now also, around this time in 2012-13, I noticed Hurricane Katrina didn't happen when I remembered it. It was a strange time for me, and I dismissed the anomalies, preferring to leave questioning my sanity till later. Another thing that also happened around this time, Mother Teresa had just been canonized as a saint. Saint Teresa became the first living saint. She then went on a world tour. It was a big thing in the papers and news, around this time in 2012-13. From my own memory, I think she died shortly after this. But again it was a glitch, because they were talking about Saint Teresa, and I did think she was already dead. Like Muhammad Ali, she had risen from the grave again. So, 
it was big news, the first living saint, Saint Teresa. It was probably around 2012 she was canonized, and probably around 2013 she died, again. But in this timeline Mother Teresa died in 1997. I wouldn't have known there was a discrepancy, but they just announced it's official, Mother Teresa has been made a saint, this year September 4, 2016. By this time, I know something is going on with the Mandela effect, and I look up Mother Teresa, and there it shows she died in 1997. Now I'm really confused, first Mandela, Mohammed Ali, Hurricane Katrina, now this. Something is really going on with timelines. So what is it, this real event, that is happening to people worldwide, on an ever-increasing scale of recognition? It is a natural occurrence in the ascension process, an awakening to the multidimensional aspects of the universe, and perceiving more than just one timeline. We have been taught, that our life exists in a constant flow of one timeline. We have been taught many contradictions. Humanity still can't agree on how we were created, where, and why, but each insists theirs is the right version. When you first notice you are on a different timeline, with a slightly different history, you are becoming aware of your multidimensional self, within multiple timelines. Now these timelines are tricky things. Right now we see changes in the history, as we move to a different timeline, and they begin to open us to this understanding, but these timelines are only from our present life perspective. The next part, is understanding past present and future existing simultaneously, that you are creating now. But that's getting a bit ahead of myself. Past life recognition will become part of your knowing, as will foresight into your future life. Everybody can understand how our memories work, how sometimes even a smell can trigger a memory. The Mandela effect can also get very personal. About six months ago I met a friend's husband, for the first time. He insisted differently, and said don't you remember you helped us move. I had never met him, and I never helped them move, I was in another state, and hadn't talked to her in years, I certainly didn't help them move. Now, if I didn't know about the Mandela effect, I would argue with this guy he's wrong, and inside think, is this guy tripping or what? But I started to wonder, what was my other self creating in his timeline? I have no idea of what went on, but he does. Your whole history in this timeline starts to become a mystery to you, and you ask, what have I done in this timeline? You soon realize that it doesn't matter, now is all that matters, and what you are creating in this timeline. I separated from my husband around four years ago, we don't talk much, but I had to know what he remembered about Hurricane Katrina. Around a month ago I phoned him, and I asked, expecting he would remember things the same as me. He didn't, and he has very distinctly different memories. I was floored, he wasn't the same man I remembered. It was bizarre, talking to a man you lived with for 25 years, and this man is a stranger. The man I married is on another timeline. It's the same person, but it isn't, they have a completely different memory. No one has the definitive answer, nor can its complexities be perceived by the mind. You can't logic this, it has to be felt and observed within your own experience. When you are recognizing these differences, you have opened yourself to higher frequencies, and now you perceive them. You may not be consciously aware of this yet, but these Mandela effects are your wake-up call, to be consciously aware, so you may have higher truth revealed to your conscious mind. With this knowledge, the conscious mind can now make choices, based upon your own higher wisdom. You are your own best teacher, and I can't stress that enough, listen to yourself, allow yourself to experience your complete inner knowing. This is what I meant when I said, you can't use your mind. This is where you use your heart, and learn to trust in what comes from within you. Your mind requires logic, that is taught to you. This is the filter you see through, when you try to understand something. 
it is what we are taught, and not necessarily true. Logic is the rational mind trying to comprehend, and some things, the rational mind can't comprehend. The Mandela effect is one of these. It can't be explained by logic, or what we are taught, and if the mind tries to comprehend it, we think we are crazy. The heart however, just knows, because it doesn't have that limited filter our mind does. Your heart feels what it wants you to know and understand, and has access to multidimensional wisdom. Our heart knows what the head cannot. Your heart understands, what your mind can't logic. The more you listen to yourself, the more you realize your heart's pretty smart, and it knows lots more than your mind. This ascension process is all about raising frequencies, to exist in a higher dimension. As people, we are clearing negative energies, and raising our own universal energies, to higher levels of understanding and experience. We are in the process of changing our whole paradigm. Not just people are ascending, the earth is ascending into a higher frequency of existence as well. The earth is also clearing negative energies, that are largely from us. All the negative activities that attached itself to the earth, are being shaken off, dissipated, and washed clean. The earth is creating a higher frequency, a much different Schumann resonance, which has risen considerably in the last 10 years. Before this, scientists said it was a fixed frequency. So even scientists are confirming, the earth is gradually increasing its resonant frequency. The earth is ascending in frequency and spin, this is undeniable. The Schumann resonance represents the average resonant frequency of the planet. The earth's increases in overall frequency, or Schumann resonance, means that at 15 Hz, most people should be able to hear it, it's within normal hearing range. You might notice this sound, like a hum with a high pitch, ringing in your ears. In the quiet of the night, this sound can become very loud, and noticeable. This is not a medical problem, this is the much louder Schumann resonance. The earth is also experiencing, a fluctuating, and weakening magnetic field, indicating pole reversal may be imminent. There is a lot going on with Earth ascending, humans ascending, and if that wasn't enough to deal with, there's more. In a way our solar system is ascending too, as a part of its whole, the Earth ascends within it. This will cascade through many universes, and dimensions. In my belief, nothing can ascend in this solar system, without the aid of its binary partner, to help shake things loose, so the cycle can start afresh. There is another system bound to ours, and they cycle together, two sides of a binary system. It is coming closer to the sun, and it is disrupting everything in our solar system. This includes Earth. This close encounter, with our polar opposite system, creates changes in the magnetic field, which in turn creates gravity changes. Within the fluidity of the fluctuating and weakened magnetic field, our own duality, or polarity field is affected. Photonic bombardment is likewise increased, as we move through a large photonic band, covering several decades. Inside our DNA are photons, and these photons are responding to the extra outside cosmic influence. All living matter with DNA is being affected by increased photonic stimulation. Herein lies the reconstruction of our original 12-stranded DNA. The universe is, right now, awakening our DNA and our true selves, with messages and information, triggered by extra photonic stimulation inside our DNA. It would be natural to expect, that as our DNA becomes more active, and reconstructed, then we are more likely to notice things like changing timelines. Part of the ascension process also involves becoming part of a larger community, a galactic community. We are not the only life in the universes, or dimensions. We are a small fraction of what exists. But before we can become part of a galactic community, we must ascend within our own personal vibrations and frequencies. When you look at it, the ascension process is multifaceted, and the Mandela effect is one of its facets. The way we see time is changing. The way we see ourselves, 
and our place in the universe, is changing. The Earth is the place of our current existence, and if we want to continue living on an ascending planet, then we must ascend also, lest we can't exist here at all. Don't worry, or fear, this is a natural part of the process. It is far better we see the positive soul evolution before us, that we as individuals, and as group consciousness, can recreate ourselves on this planet, and with the ascending earth. We can't avert this cosmic cycle, but we can choose how it affects us. If you can perceive the Mandela effect in your life, then you have subconsciously made a choice to ascend, and your timeline path will be different to those who choose not to. You will not experience a timeline of utter devastation, but one of ascension. Your recognition of changing timelines is your own proof this will be so. Right now, everyone appears to be on the same timeline, but there will come a time when two distinctions will be made in critical energy. Those who choose to ascend, will be on a different timeline, than those choosing not to. Your own experience in the Mandela effect is proof you can shift timelines. When it becomes a conscious choice, rather than an effect, you can shift timelines at will. This is how you will experience a new beginning of a greater state of being. You will still be on the earth, but in a different timeline, on a higher dimensional plane of existence. I would like to thank everyone, who have shared their own experiences. As we learn from each other, and support each other in our experiences, we become closer, and another facet of ascension. We are not so alone in our experience anymore. In our shared experiences, we are creating higher awareness within ourselves. Thank you for listening. If you liked it, then share it around. If you didn't like it, then share it around anyway, someone you know might get something out of it. Be kind to each other, and yourself. Talk to you soon. Cheers from Kerry.